This is you chasing your data science internship. How do I know this? Because I was in your shoes exactly a year ago. This is how that looked like. This time last year, I came to terms with a terrifying truth. One by one, intern positions were starting to pop up and, well, I was behind. At that moment, I knew that if I didn't buckle down, I was gonna end up unemployed and disowned by my Asian parents. I had no choice but to limit all distractions, lock myself in a room and get to work. Every day, I forced myself to apply to new internships, studied up on product and machine learning, and dragged myself to interview after interview after interview. And then came the rejections. Many, many rejections. But four dehumanizing months later, I finally got the job. And this is what I learned from that process. I applied to 158 data science internships. Since then, I've gone through the recruitment process and landed a few internships that I am very happy with. Today, I'll be going through the three main stages that I went through, the application, the challenge, and interview stage in order to land an internship at the sexiest job of the 21st century. First off, the application stage. At first, you may be tempted to just rush into applying, but wait. Not so fast. In my experience, it is worth it to spend an adequate amount of time building and revising your resume before actually starting to apply in order to maximize your chances of passing the resume screen and getting your foot in the door. Personally, I spent a whole month just working on my resume every single day. And throughout that process, I learned that there are two main things to keep in mind when building a DS resume. Number one, specificity or focusing exactly on what you did and what skills you use. So when you're talking about your past projects or internships on your resume, ask yourself, what skills, tools, or languages did you use? And how big was the data set? Did you build a model or a visualization? What kind? And using what language? Get as technical as you can and name drop the skills that you use. Number two is impact. What was the exact impact that you had on your past project or internship? Try to include numbers. Did you build a dashboard that is used across a hundred plus members of the company? Build a model that increased company efficiency by 50% somehow. Again, focus on impact. Lastly, because 99% of companies do use a resume scanner, it's important that you dump all the technical keywords into the skill section of your resume. Include libraries, languages, tools, software. Here are some keywords for reference or copy pasting, I guess. Now, after you've spent some time revising your resume, it's time to actually start applying. But where do you start? I use these websites. LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Handshake, Indeed, Google Jobs, the actual company website in your school's career fair. Note that it is perfectly normal to apply to 100 to 200, even 300 positions before getting an offer. So don't be afraid to go ham. So congrats, you've passed the resume screen and you're now at the challenge stage. For some companies, this looks like an online assessment, a code signal or a hacker rank, in which case I suggest you brush up on your Python and SQL skills, maybe throw in a little leak code just in case, or it could look like a take home challenge where they typically give you a data set and a problem. You are responsible for coming up with a model or a visualization to help solve that problem and then whip up a mini report of your results. You are given a data set of unique users that have visited a certain YouTube channel. Each row contains information about that user. Some example columns include age, gender, geographic location, etc., and a binary column that shows whether or not the user subscribed on their first visit. Identify which factors best predict whether a user will subscribe to the channel on their first visit. <gasps> Speaking of which, you should go do that right now, please. To prepare for these take-home challenges, I memorized the different kinds of models, when to use each one, and how to implement them in either Python or R. Typically, when it comes to interviews, you can expect two types. The phone interview, which is basically a 30-minute technical interview with a data scientist. Pass that and you'll go on to the final round, the on-site interview. Back-to-back -back interviews that are designed to test different kinds of skills, like SQL, product sense, etc. And this leads into my main piece of advice when it comes to the recruitment process in general, to be well-rounded. This is where the data science recruitment process gets kind of tricky. There is a lot to study, so don't procrastinate. Don't be like me. Now, I know, I know this can be a bit 
overwhelming. So to spare you the headache, here's how I prepped for each one. For coding interviews, brush up on SQL and basic data structures and algorithms. I personally find the Stratascratch subscription to be pretty worth it. Also, make sure you understand statistics and probability basics, what A-B testing is and how to set up an experiment, and also go over some machine learning models. In general, StatQuest saved my life. And finally, product sense is pretty important. Search product data science interview on Google or YouTube and practice those. Research the company and practice some technical behavioral questions before the interview. As for my general advice, I have three tips. Number one is to ask the recruiter for what skills to prepare for the interview. So the good news is that you don't have to prepare all of these at once. The subset of skills that you'll be tested on vary significantly across companies because data science looks a little bit different at every company. So that's why I typically ask the recruiter what I will be tested on before the interview, focus on preparing the skills that they tell me, and then all the other ones lightly just in case. Number two is to not discount the soft skills. So throughout my time interviewing, I discovered that soft skills were almost, if not just as important as technical skills when it comes to data science interviews. So when you are studying and you're solving a problem, practice solving it out loud and explaining your thought process and how you got to your answer. One time in a final round interview, I was asked a question and I had no idea how to solve it. But basically I just explained my thought process out loud every step of the way, even though I didn't end up at the right answer, I somehow still got the offer. So soft skills and explaining your approach is very important. And lastly, before the interview, check the interview tab on Glassdoor, Strata Scratch, whatever platform you're using for the company you're going to be interviewing for. Thank me later. And if you pass all those stages, you get the offer. And now you can sit back, reinstall all your old apps, and finally relax. And if you're not quite there yet, have full confidence that you will be. I remember when I was recruiting, I basically locked myself in the room and didn't have a social life for a good few months. There were many moments where I was really stressed out and thought I would not get a single offer and it would be the end of the world. But know that even when you're getting rejected left and right, like I was, and it seems like absolute hell, like it did for me, it will get better and all your hard work will be worth it. So yeah, I hope this helped you. Thank you so much for watching and please sub for more content very soon. See ya.